In this video, I wanted to redo my end curling method or the curls that I put on the ends of each twist when I make my crochet wigs. I did one a couple of years back, but I wanted to do an updated version so that you guys can possibly get a better perspective on that process. So if you're into that, stay tuned. Hi guys, Kamra right here with Elon Blue Talks, where I help you to create stunning wigs through easy to follow steps, explore simple protective hairstyle options, and share tips on growing healthy, beautiful hair naturally. If you haven't already, go ahead and press that subscribe button down below to catch more videos just like this. All links in this video is gonna be in the description box below. Jumping right into it, I'm gonna grab my metal wand and this is what I use to curl synthetic hair. It's great because it helps to reduce some of the heat that is transferred onto the hair so that it doesn't burn or damage it. Since I am using synthetic hair, it does help to not have direct heat right onto the hair. So uh, yeah, that's what I use it for. Typically with natural hair or with human hair, you could just get a curling wand, a electric curling wand and wrap the hair around that. But because we're working with synthetic hair, that is not, uh, possible so we are using this metal wand to try to transfer some of that heat a little bit more sensitively to the synthetic hair so that is what i'll be using today to start off this curling process so one by one i take the hair and wrap it around the wand and then i take my handy dandy flat iron and i press the flat iron right on to the hair I usually do a little bit of a twist around the hair just to smooth out those ends, those loose hair ends, but uh, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just like to get the heat all the way around rather than just having it pressed in one area. So what I'm doing is just wrapping it around like this so that the, okay, so you have your finger here and I'm just wrapping it around so that one, it creates a smoothness and then two, it distributes heat all the way around the hair rather than just right here. So that's what I'm doing there. But like I said, you don't have to do that. Um, it's definitely optional, but it's just become a habit for me, so I just do it. One other thing to be mindful of is the amount of heat that's transferred from the flat iron. I usually keep the flat iron on the lowest setting possible, which for mine is 250 degrees. I just, I usually just suggest to anyone who's using, who's curling with synthetic hair, or at least with this brand of synthetic hair, not to go over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So 300 is max for me, depending on the amount of hair in each twist or the amount of hair I'm working with, I will go up to 300 or down to 250. This particular black hair has a thinner consistency or density so I brought it down to 250 I don't need that much heat on these particular twist strands so the process does go a little bit faster because it is thinner but also I don't have to use as much heat so if the twist had more bulk and had more density then that heat tolerance would go up a little bit and you can work with more heat that way so just depends you'll have to kind of play around with your own wig and the one that you're working with um, and just see what amount of heat it can take so it might be good to just do a little tester just to see as as we switch over to my 27 blonde um, sunny moon unit it is much thicker so I, the heat can go the heat tolerance can go up a little bit as well as the duration of how long the 
the flat iron stays onto the hair so that's the whole thing but so in this video with the blonde hair i'm going to be using a little bit more heat and with the black hair a little less heat so like i said before it is beneficial to just kind of give yourself a little test run and just see how much density your hair has in each twist and base the amount of heat and the, and the duration on that So we'll speed up this process just a little bit so you guys aren't here all day watching my videos. <laughs> Not that I would mind. <laughs> but yeah, let's speed up this process so we can get to the end. So what I like to also do is kind of untangle the ends before I start to wrap it around the wand. It uh, just helps to kind of smooth it out. And when it's time to untwist the hair and untwist the actual twist, it's not so matted and, you know, clumped up because you kind of detangled the ends before curling it. So it does give it a much more smoother finish, just so you know. You don't have to do this these are just steps that i do so yeah so you don't have to do this but it just helps to kind of detangle the ends a little bit untwist it and then kind of start to wrap it around the wand Also, another thing you'll see me do is like grip the hair and kind of like press it with my hands before I let it go. I'm just allowing the hair time to cool down so that it doesn't, it doesn't drop as soon as I let it go. Not that it drops much at all, but it's at this point it's just become a habit to just kind of hold that heat in there so that the curl forms nice and tight uh, before I drop it just because we have gravity and it may help it may help to kind of pull the hair a little bit looser so that that curl then turns into a looser form curl. But uh, typically this is not really a problem, but I just like to be sure and just get a nice tight curl from the process and then, gen and then just drop it. But yes, you will see me kind of press the hair right before I drop it so that all of the, so that the hair kind of cools off before allowing it to, um, or until moving on to the next one. On the wig, there are about 12 rows of twists and then about four, five or six twists going down each row. It took me about 30, 35 minutes to complete the whole process. So this is something that you may have to take a, a little bit of time on, but not too much time. You know, it's still a reasonable amount of time of curling and you don't 
because it's synthetic hair you won't have to curl it that that often it's just when you're refreshing so that's a good thing you know would you like let's suppose i do this often in vocational guidance for students they come to me and say well uh, we're getting out of college and we have the faintest idea of what we want to do so i always ask what would you like to do if money went on what would how would you really enjoy spending Oh, it's so amazing as a result of our kind of educational system crowds of students say well we'd like to be painters we'd like to be poets we'd like to be writers but as everybody knows you can't earn any money that way or another person says well i'd like to live an out of doors life and ride horses i said you want to teach in the riding school uh, let's go through with it what do you want when we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do i will say to him you do that and uh, forget the money. Uh, because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is, to go on doing things you don't like doing. Which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing in a long life spent in a miserable way. And after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is, you can eventually turn it, uh, you can eventually become a master of it. The only way to become a master of something is really put it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. So uh, don't, don't worry too much. Uh, that's, uh, everybody's, uh, somebody's interested in everything. And anything you can be interested in, you'll find out. But it's absolutely stupid to spend your time doing things you don't like in order to go on spending things you don't like and doing things you don't like and to teach your children to follow in the same track. See, what we're doing is we're bringing up children and educating them to live the same sort of life that they're living. So yeah, so literally the ends went from raggedy and to like a nice cute little pop and that's what I'm going for. Not that the raggedy ends or the loose ends is not doable or not or is not cute. It's just not the look that I was going for, so I'm curling it. Now, I have gone with looser ends before, but um but most time the ends are curl. I do find that looser ends does tend to get matted and tangle a lot quicker and so the wig will not last as long for me and the way I wear it. So you know, it's up to you, however you want to do it, it's up to you. So curl ends or loose ends is totally up to you, just however you want to, you know, look. So in slow motion, what you'll see me do is wrap the hair around the wand. Either side of the wand works. I usually use the thinner part of the wand so I can get more variety of sizes. But uh, you can use either side. It doesn't even matter. It's easier to curl the black hair over 
the blonde hair because the black hair is thinner so the hairs easily wrap around the wand whereas the blonde hair it has taken me a lot more effort to hold that hair onto the wand so again that comes with just more density and that's just that process but with the technique that i use and wrapping the hair around the wand as well as making sure that the first couple of wraps is then held on by the second and third couple of wraps if that makes any sense i don't know <laughs> hopefully the visuals will explain it a lot better than i am verbally so yeah So you can totally see the results of a curled end and a non-curled end. So I'll stop there. That is the process of how I curl my ends with a curling wand that I use because again, it is synthetic hair and we wanna distribute the heat or spread out the heat or not apply direct heat right onto the hair. So yeah. Thank you guys so so much for watching as always i do appreciate all of your comments and all of your suggestions i hope that you liked the video please do share with your friends and family if you did and if you haven't already please please subscribe to the channel and thank you guys so much for watching again thank you thank you guys I want to take a moment as well to thank all of you guys for all the support i finally did make it to 3,000 subscribers so whoop, 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 whoop. yes so yes very happy about that thank you so much guys it's been fun <laughs>